In this video we are going to explore the power monopoly that is Pacific Gas and Electric, also known as PG&E. The company provides natural gas and electricity to 5.2 million households in the northern two-thirds of California. It has also been convicted of many crimes and murders, yet still allowed to operate. Let's explore this more. Founded 119 years ago in 1905, PG&E now employs over 26,000 employees. This video is not meant to disparage any employee, and I know the comments will roll in, about what a great company it is to work for, however, this video is aimed at the crimes of this ridiculous company. Most of us have seen the movie Aaron Brockovich. You know, the one where PG&E tainted an entire town of Hinkley with 370 million gallons of chromium-tainted wastewater. That gave residents cancer so PGE could save a few bucks on responsible disposal. The company was court-ordered to pay out $333 million to its victims. At the time it was the largest settlement ever paid in a direct action lawsuit. By 2013, PG&E had cleaned up 54 acres but the entire remedy will take another 40 years. Then we have the San Bruno pipeline explosion. At 6.11 p.m. on September 9, 2010, a 30-inch diameter steel natural gas pipeline exploded into flames in the Crestmore residential neighborhood. Many thought it was an earthquake or a commercial plane crash with a fireball of more than 1,000 feet tall. But no. It was PG&E at it again. Eight people were killed. $558 million was paid to claimants from that one. Time and time again PG&E has been caught lying about maintenance. The pipeline was laid in 1956. Investigators reported that it didn't even meet the standards for 1956. Another natural gas explosion they caused in Rancho Cordova killed a man in his home and injured several others. PG&E was fined $38 million for negligence by the California Public Utilities Commission. PG&E has been charged a few times with knowingly and willfully violating the Natural Gas Pipeline Safety Act. They falsify maintenance logs, fail to locate and mark gas pipelines. They pretty much do what they want and literally get away with murder. Then if charged or fined they hike their rates and pass those fines on to its customers. And before we dive into all of the fires they've caused, and there are almost too many to list, let's talk about how in 2010 PG&E replaced all traditional mechanical electric meters with smart meters. Many customers reported soaring bills and questioned the accuracy of the new smart meters. The CPUC conducted an investigation and found them to be accurate, leaving customers to just deal with the new higher costs of electricity. Some customers with the smart meters report illness and even cancers from the new meters. In 2011, PG&E spent $79 million on lobbying to stay a monopoly and not paying any taxes during 2008 and 2010, instead getting $1 billion in tax rebates while making a profit of $4.8 billion. Shady practices for sure. For some reason they have falsified tens of thousands of call before you dig records. They endanger their own employees and the public and their customers that pay them 80% higher rates than the national average. Yes, they are now working at a snail's pace to bury power lines and remove trees from pipeline areas, but is it enough? Let's talk now about the epic and deadly fires they've caused. Buckle up. And sorry if this triggers my fellow PG&E fire survivors. Stop watching now if you are sensitive to this topic. PG&E equipment has often been the cause of many fires in California. 
Yes, California has seasonal wildfires and that's natural. We are going to explore some of the fires this company has actually been convicted of starting. In 1994, there was the Troner Fire. 500 acres burned, and they caught 739 counts for negligence for not trimming trees. It took the court clerk one and a half hours to read all of the counts during court proceedings. We lost a historic schoolhouse and 12 homes in the town of Rough and Ready. Also during this trial, it was brought to light that PG&E had diverted nearly $80 million from tree trimming funds into shareholders' profits. In 1999, they caused the Pendula Fire. 11,725 acres burned within the Tahoe National Forest and the Plumas National Forest. This one cost about $4 million to fight and suppress. A settlement was brought of $14.8 million that went towards restoration and suppression costs. There was the Sims Fire and Fred's Fire in 2004 and an electrical explosion in 2005. Just ridiculous. There was the 2014 Carmel gas explosion, where faulty maintenance logs were blamed once again and PG&E settled out of court on this one with the city of Carmel. In 2015, there was the Butte fire. This one was in Amador County and burned 70,000 acres. They killed two people, destroyed 475 structures, and totaled about 75 million in damages. Once again, lack of tree trimming by the company was to blame. The absolutely unbelievable mega fire called the Camp Fire. This was a doozy and the most destructive fire in California history. PG&E once again failed to maintain their equipment resulting this time with the deaths of 85 people, injuring and mentally scarring thousands. This fire burned down entire towns and communities such as Paradise, Megalia, Konkau and others. Over 18,000 structures were lost. Victims were awarded 16 billion in damages which threw PG&E into bankruptcy forcing claimants to take shares in the shady company to later be sold for cash to meet claimants' awards. However, five years after this terrible crime, claimants are still waiting for payments and sit at about 60% of their claims awarded, and there is a possibility of none of them reaching 100% of their claims to be paid. The campfire was recently surpassed, as the deadliest fire in United States history with 85 fatalities, by the Lahaina fire with 101 fatalities in 2023. In 2020, they caused the Zog fire. This won about 56,000 acres in Shasta and Tehama counties. They destroyed 204 structures and killed four people. Once again, not maintaining appropriate space along power lines. I believe there are ongoing litigations with this one including civil suits. There was the Redwood Fire, the Sulphur Fire, the Cherokee Fire, the 37 Fire, the Tubbs Fire, the Kincaid Fire, the North Bay Fire, the Dixie Fire, the Blue Fire, the Pocket Fire, the Atlas Fire, the Adobe Fire, the Cascade Fire, and the Ghost Ship Fire, all caused by faulty PG and E equipment. I am sure I have left out some of the terrible crimes of this company, feel free to comment if you would like to add to. Time after time, this company gets away with murder and destruction. Unbelievable energy rates, executive financial scandals, and so much more. Why is this company allowed to continue to operate? Why isn't it broken up into smaller, more manageable sub-companies? Why does the governor Gavin Newsom hold stock in PG&E? 
It all seems so shady, yet so obvious. PG&E has been on probation for its crimes for decades. Yet more and more crimes ensue. Would you or I be able to go around killing people and destroying entire towns and just get probation? Or a fine that we just pass on to our customers? I don't think so. My sincerest condolences to all of PG and E's victims. No amount of money can replace community, heirlooms, family photos, even beloved pets and mostly the lives of those murdered by greed. As of now, the big plan is to just turn off and shut down power during high wind events. Even if the outside temps are over 100 degrees. Northern California deserves better, especially when we are paying 80% higher energy fees than the rest of the nation. Is this the greediest of all companies? Should they invest in their aging infrastructure to make it safe? Should they consider not falsifying maintenance logs and maybe actually maintain their equipment? How long until the next town burns down? Or until they take the life of or maim someone you know or care about? This is just insane. Thoughts and comments are appreciated. Make sure to share like and subscribe.